So welcome to the Human Computer Interaction course. And both from to those here and those who will watch the video hopefully later. Uh, I am Luigi De Russis. I will be the main teacher for this course. And with me there will be other two teachers that will mostly do the laboratory hours. Uh, that were Alberto Mongero Farello and Tommaso Calò. So, just to set the tone of the of this course and of this semester, even if it's quite hot here now, uh, let's speak a little bit of expectation. Your expectation. So what do you hope or think to learn in this course? And this will set a little bit the tone of the course. I'm not going to speak one hour and a half, almost ever. I will ask you things. Uh, and we will wait for the answer, also in silence if needed. Uh, because here the goal is not to, to learn a lot of things by memory or similar, but to know how to apply those things. So, Let's start with a easy question, just to break the, the ice. Expectation. So you are here, why did you choose this course? There will be, okay, something that you can say out loud, for sure. Someone. Don't be shy. I'm not, I still, all the students always survive to me, so. So which are your expectations on the course? Yes. I chose this course because the course was uh, mainly practical. And uh, instead of studying and following some lectures, I thought that I will be doing something actually practically. So the expectation about having a practical course? OK. Well, some theory will be still there, because otherwise we We'll, we'll just uh, do stuff that you already know, right? And expectation, what do you hope to learn? So at the end of the course. Uh, many times it is very frustrating to interact with a system that is not user friendly. I would like to learn how to avoid that. Maybe some system that is not So avoid the frustration of uh, operating with interactive system, interactive computer system, that's surely something we will, well, the course is about that. Avoiding that. Yes, avoiding that for others. Yeah. Clearly not for you, you. Well, also you as the creator, right, of those system. So avoiding so that the others uh, can, um, can avoid the frustration, surely. That's all, well, that's the goal of the course. Uh, in a few words, like avoiding creating systems and applications that are easy to use, usable, use and useful. So learning how to make system sucks, yes, less. Others. A few others and then we will proceed, I promise. No expectation. So you're just here waiting for me to tell you what to do. Right? Is that? No expectation at all. You just pass through the corridor, say, oh, there is a room, let's go in. No? I don't think so. So expectation. Come on. There is any topic you think you will learn here or we will touch here? At least one more? It will be a long semester this way, trust me. So you, you don't have expectation. Good, so that's um, except the two that spoke. So it's a good way, so I, we cannot fail your expectation since you have no expectation, so everything is good. Okay, so what's the goal of the course? So today we are just doing an introduction, right, of the, of the course. So what's the goal of the course? The goal is, 
as your colleague was saying, uh, understanding, first of all, how to design the user experience when interacting with modern applications. Hmm? Not only applications, but also devices and environment in some cases. And we will do this first, getting an in-depth knowledge of what it means in practice to do that. Hmm? And this is the human-centered process that is reported here. And then we will also apply it in practice during the course. Hmm? So to do that, we will become familiar with methods to gather needs from people and also how to evaluate the interactive system that uh, we are creating. So let me try to switch the microphone again to see. So, okay. So I think if I don't move, probably it's fine. Um, so why this course? Well, um, here there are two examples, right? So one is we can say the some developer attitude, right? I have to, to develop something and I have maybe a list of features, maybe I have feedback from that and the user is stupid, let's go there and I, I know the best from my system, for what I need to do. Uh, and the other one is this uh, man so with, with the cut, um, for which you, you can have maybe a product, the features, and then you discover how many you have get cuts. Okay, you discover one, Two, okay, three. Okay, so you discover that you maybe spend a lot of money to, to, to buy something, and then the box that contains the expensive thing you just bought is more likely as a toy than the actual thing. So in a way, the need of the cat is more the box than the expensive product you, you have bought. Um, so this is sort of motivation. What we, we want to do here is not to learn how to build technically yet another computer system. We are not here to learn how to build um, a more complicated web application or a more complicated mobile application or whatever. What we want to do here is to understand, to start from the beginning in a way, to understand which are the needs, the problem that we want to solve and then how can technology solve that? Using the knowledge and the experience and also the technical knowledge that we have. And so we are not going to learn something new about web programming, mobile programming, etc. formally. We are going to use what you know or you mostly know or you have a foundation in to build something that again is useful, used, potentially used and easy to use. So one thing that we will do during the course, sometimes in the lectures, is a small game that, again, interactivity, that we will call all of fame or all, all of shame. So you will see a user interface, whatever kind, and we need to decide if this is in the top 10 all of shame, so it's terrible, or down that right, that, that road, or in the hall of fame, so as a good example of a user interface and sometimes they will be maybe in the middle but that is easy one so would you put this in the all of fame or all of shame shame why that should be easy as well so do you know how to so what's the starting point for here why you, this is the first bot button you have to press or the first input field to, to enter what is 
who knows? That's exactly the, the reason why it's in the old shame, right? This is, this is, a, this is actual, this is a real actual. Um, um, it was a developer that say, oh, there is uh, wget, that is a common line tool that I use a lot, and as many common line tool, it has a lot of options. Uh, that are invisible, you have to remember them. And this person uh, thought that, well, I can put it in the user interface. And so basically, this person put everything in the user interface. And so here you have the URL, because it's you get, so you clearly get something from the internet. So you have a URL, and then you have a bunch of buttons like accept or reject. I cannot really move, apparently. Um, a lot of accept or reject here, buttons, save setting, load setting, about, and then start or add, pick one. And there is also pro mode, for which I don't really want to know what is in the pro mode, this is the basic mode, right? So this is clearly all a shame. And in this moment, it's just illustrative, but then we will try to learn something also from the bad or good things we, we will see hmm, during the lectures. So the things to learn from here is, this is bad, avoid it, right? So what we want to do in the course is we will do these things. We will, I we will show you, and we will put in practice along the semester, again, in a practical way, an interactive, iterative, and human-centered process. That will mean that we will create something, and then we will probably destroy a little bit of that something, and then we will modify something else, and then iteratively until the end with a more concrete and final prototype of a system that solves a specific need. And not here, that is written, second bullet point, people needs, not wants. So let's start from this difference now, because I know that is difficult to, to get it. What's the difference to you between a need that a person can have or a want that a person want? What's a need? A necessity. A necessity? Yes, that's a synonym, right? <laughs> Let's try to use more than one word. It's regardless of what you want and want, you should actually need to have it. It's a need. It's, a, it's more similar to necessity in that sense, more or less. Let's do the other game. Let's imagine that you, you, want to, you want to create, I don't know, an application for running, okay, to go run. And you speak with people that run, and they will tell you, I want a chronometer, and I want a map. They are telling you a series of features, a series that the application should have according to them right? The map, the chronometer, whatever. Hmm? So these are wants. And you speak with another person and they will tell you another set of features, things that they want. They want personalization features, etc., etc. And you speak with 10 people and you have then the end of sets of what the people want. And you diligently get the set of 10 multiply by 10, 100 feature and implement it in a user interface. And then what happens most of the time is that you go to those or other people and show the application you did and what they tell you is, but it's not what they wanted. This is not useful for me. This is not something that they want to use. Even if you actually followed what they wanted, what is missing, and it's a tricky part, is moving from what they want to what they actually need. So they want a chronometer, why? To keep track of the time, good. So the need maybe is keeping track of the time and not the chronometer. The map maybe is keeping track of the distance. That could be a map or not, but that is a design choice that is up to you 
to make, not up to the people you are building something for. So the first step that we are going to do in this course that is complicated is to actually to try to understand the need of some people and we will see how we can construct this. Then we will move to speak about the principle and guidelines to actually do these things in a more practical way. I already mentioned prototyping rapidly and frequently. This is general rules. We will try to put it in a process, short process, quick process for the purpose of the semester. And then we will speak about evaluation and also how to design and development a good interactive system includes actually the development of the system. So programming something to create such a system. Hmm? So these are the ingre ingredients, and these are the ingredients set in what we more or less learn, hmm? where the big part, hmm, that is the one with the orange line, hmm, is how to build these applications and how to apply them in projects. Hmm? And we also see some behind the WIMP paradigms and some introduction that we are going to do this week, the introduction. Um, so do you know what is WIMP? I cannot. Do you know what is WIMP? No idea. So all your computers, not necessarily mobile phone and tablets, use the WIMP paradigm. W stands for Windows, right? You have Windows. Even if you're using Mac or Linux, you have Windows, right? In it. I stand for? No. What? I stand for icons, M stand for, so your windows, your icons, you double click on icons, M stand for, not mouse, menu, and P stand for, it's connected with the mouse now, pointer. So it's the paradigm that desktop computer use windows icons mouse and pointers and it's behind wimp because we are also trying to look at what happens when there is no windows icon pointer and menu so on mobile for instance you don't have the pointer in a classical way because it's your finger the pointer so the paradigm is not exactly the same so the plan of the course is more or less this. So this is how the 14 weeks will unfold. We will start with introduction to HCI. We will then speak of problem framing, how to actually frame a problem before. So in, our, in my experience, we as engineer are very good in solving problem, not always in framing them. So if they give us a problem, we can solve that. But if we don't know the problem, that's where the tricky part is. So we will start in understanding which is the problem and then try to solve it. And so we will add a step before the requirements, the list of things you have to do. You will discover which are the things you have to do. And we will do this during the finding that as the name say is about finding needs. And then we will speak about task, analysis, prototypes, different levels, and then clearly a bit of theory in terms of its guidelines, principle, and the heuristics that are sort of guidelines. How to design visually hmm, um, a user interface, since vision is one of the most used senses for the humans. Uh, one kind, two kinds of evaluation. One is heuristic evaluation, so evaluation according to the guidelines, and the other one is usability testing, so to give the application to your person, people you are uh, designing and creating the application for and see if it's at least usable or it's create frustration as your colleague were saying before and then in the middle we will also speak about uh, some advanced interaction like what happens when we have AI in the uh, context 
Is everything as before or there is something different? Um, so more simple things, course website, we don't, uh, you probably have seen the email and the message on the portale. So we are not going to use the portale for the material, but all the material will be in that website. That is a short link. Uh, but you can also save the long link, isalight.polito.it slash teaching something. And all, all the material is public, so there is no need of password or request, etc. And there you will find slides, exercise, lab text, the full schedule that is not yet online, but there will be the full planned schedule of the course, who will be in which lecture, hour, etc. Templates for the work and deadlines to submit the work that you are going to do and more on this in a second and any supplementary material that we can think of um, the course will be video recorded just the classes so monday and tuesday uh, and put it both on the portale and on youtube uh, in theory typically let's say immediately after the class uh, and we will also have the material on GitHub in an organization. So these slides are already also linked in uh, GitHub and also for the group work. And as you may already have seen, we will use Telegram for handling the let's say, quick communication within the course among you and with us. So there is a group, a Telegram group that is called HCI 2023. That is the link and it's also on the website. And the Telegram group has two topics, as Telegram call is, calls it, two channels. One is news and update, that as the name say, is about news and updates, uh, especially from us. Uh, and the other is question and answer, that is for question and answer. Mm. Either your questions and our answer, or our question and your answer, or your question and your answer, pick a combination of things. Um, if you want to communicate privately, it may happen. Uh, you can do it either via direct message, so just write to any of us, teachers. Uh, otherwise, use email, especially if the conversation is long and you have something longer to share. And in addition, you can also use this student hour um, that I try to fix, let's say, uh, between 4 and 5 p.m. on Tuesday in my office, that is and over the, uh, it is in the Darwin department, the department of computer science, uh, that way, like third floor. And it's also on request, so if you need to speak uh, of anything. And let me just go quick through this why. I, one thing that I noticed, I'm sorry, so probably you're not the target audience because you are in the second year, most of you are in the second year of the master's degree, but you have actually uh, access, you have access to people that are, in theory, expert and knowledgeable on some topics. And you typically don't use this access to knowledge, if not for a very specific problem. Um, so this student hour will be surely for courses, for the course. So I have a problem with the course. I have a problem with my group in the course. Etc. But also, if you have any other doubts, or I don't know how theses work, or I don't know if I need to, I don't know, do a PhD or not, or I have to offer from these two companies, or how to found an internship abroad, suggestions, speak with people. Typically, it works, and they are kind most of the time uh, with professors, right? So, if you want, this is a moment to speak with me. If you want, if you don't want, I will surely, I can assure you, I will find some way, other way to use that hour on my Tuesday. Don't worry. Um, so I will be there. If you want, you can come, just send a message on Telegram or via email beforehand so that to be sure that I will be there available and I will not be somewhere else and uh, either, but also on request. Um, so the course methodology. So the course methodology is both project-based and problem-based. Project-based means that the outcome of the course will not be a written exam, will not be a 
theoretical discussion of things, but it will be a project made in groups and a discussion about the project and critique on the projects. And this must be done in team along the semester. And it's also problem based because the project doesn't start from our set of requirements like you have to do these, but we start from needs that you need to extract from people and which people you will, I will tell you in a moment. Um, so the project will be developed under along the semester, step by step, with assignments. And each of the projects will fall in one of three topics that are the three slots of lab, that are three alternative slots. And during these three slots, you will work on a specific topic, this is a general topic for which you will develop your own project and you will iterate on prototypes along this project, at least, let's say, two and a half prototypes. And at the end of some assignment, not all of them, there will be five assignments at the end of some of them, you will have, we will have a session of checks. Hmm? So we will meet in the labs an hour and we will just give feedback to your previous assignment. That's why this is an iterative process. So if you fail miserably, the first assignment, the rest of the project will be terrible. So what we do is that after first assignment, we had a conversation with you to see if you are on the right path or not. And if you are on the right path, you, you proceed. If you don't, you have the possibility to fix it before proceeding. And all of this is just feedback for you to learn. It's not grades. All of this feedback is just for you to learn, to improve the project and learn better. We are not going to give you points for any of this feedback. So you can also fail totally an assignment and be able to recover it. And these are no big repercussion on the final results. Okay? So as written here, feedback is there to help you students to improve the next step in the course and possibly improve also the final results. Uh, class organization, we have a three hour lecture that will be, let's say, interactive as much as possible, especially if you interact with me. Uh, and then we'll have three slots of lab, 1.5 hour per week, starting next week. And that is devoted to group projects plus feedback, with the exception that is this week we will do one class in the first hour of the lab. Hmm? So this week we will do tomorrow class and Wednesday 1 p.m. there will be another class just for this week to have material to start with the lab. Uh, classes are well in person clearly uh, and are with recorded and in theory you should have power outlets to at the, de the desk if needed and again this class we will do uh, one extra class on Wednesday and we will skip one class later in the semester since we are doing this extra class now. Labs will start September 11, October 11, 2023, clearly not 22. And they will be again in rooms with power outlets and two or three rooms should have also tables that can be moved. One room is more like this, the other two are more flexible as an assignment and is for group, assi group activities and most of the labs will have an assignment that we put online someday in advance and our goal is to have it online at least one week in advance. So for next, Friday, next Wednesday we will hope to put it online this week hmm? so that you have time before the lab to read it and think about it if needed. So laboratories are not classical laboratories, you may have already imagined. So it's not that we give you a text, you work, and if you have any question, you ask. That's the typical labs that you probably have experienced here. Uh, but it's a place in which you can work as a group autonomously under a certain topic, supervised by one teacher, and you should talk with the teacher, should work with the teacher. Clearly, you have the ownership of the project, but the teacher is there to help 
to fix your trouble, to clarify your mind, to proceed better in the project. Mm? Because mo most of the things we will see, you will really learn when you will start doing it. Mm? Because one thing is to say how to prepare an interview theoretically, one other thing is to go and do five interviews to five random people. And you learn how to do that when you're going to prepare it. So four labs in person attendance is fundamental. We are not going to take presence, but we really recommend that someone in the group is present to almost all the labs. For sure in the labs where there is feedback to be provided. Because otherwise you don't get feedback and if it's, you made something wrong, you will continue with this bad choice for the entire semester. Uh, each team, each group will be in the same slot and we work with the same teacher for the entire semester. Mm. So one third of the groups will work with Alberto, another third of the groups with me, and another third of the groups with Tommaso. And the teacher, all of us, are there again to support the teams and we are, each of them, will be the point of reference for those groups. That also means that at the exams, I will grade the project, the material of the project that I follow during the semester and same things for the other. So that they, each of us would have a deep knowledge of the project we have in the room. That's also, that's mainly why, because this class is very large. There are more than 200 people enrolled in this class and you are not 200 here, clearly. Um, but having a group, a work group, in this way, with 200 people is really challenging, in general, will be challenging. Uh, so splitting in this way is like having three mini courses for the project work. And so it helps a little bit to focus and not to um, make confusion between different groups that maybe work on similar topics. So what happens during the lab? During the lab there will be two activities. One are assignments, so you work on steps of the projects or checks, you receive feedback. And each of the three slots will have a team and all the project must fall in the slot team and specialize it. And slot must have around the same number of teams. So we cannot have team number one with 20 groups and team number two with three groups we will try to have 20, 20, 20, 10, 10, 10, hmm? more or less. And the three teams are large on purpose. One is health and well-being. So groups wanting to work in this team will work on projects that are around health and well-being in whatever declination you think it might make sense. It could be health, it could be medicine, it could be sports, it could be mental well-being, digital well-being, whatever is in, under this umbrella term. Hmm? So all the team, all the groups in this topic will work on this team. Clearly this is large enough to accommodate many different projects. Hmm? And, we, and we will all try to make your project slightly different from one from another when possible. And this is the first lot, 1 p.m. to 30 in the uh, afternoon. Team number two is about educational learning. Again, very, very large as a topic. Second slot, and it's about education, formal education, like classes, but also informal education, like learning a language, or being in a place, going to museum, or learning how to correctly do gym exercise. All of this is learning and education in a sense. And this is the second slot. And the third slot is um, a little bit more specific, that is humans meets AI. So what happens when, in which context we can have AI playing a role in our uh, context, in our situation. Also in this case, specific project within the team. And you will have weeks to create the project. Right? So each of these will have one teacher. Teams, uh, three, four students. 
given that you are in theory 200, I would say four, please. Uh, don't ask if it could be five or two, because the answer is no, because five is not three or four, and two is not three or four. Any other number is not three or four, the answer is no. Um, we are not going to create the teams at all. It's your responsibility to create teams among the people you like, or you know, or you want to know, for whatever criteria. And teams once started cannot be changed during the semester. You will work as a team for all the semester. And in case of issues, because there will be issues, right? How many of you did a teamwork, a group work without any singular issues? Good. See, one out of so 99% of you probably had some issue. He didn't. Uh, but in case of issue, for the other 90% that are not so lucky, um, and this, this is something I need to stress uh, particularly because it didn't happen, even if I say that. Talk with us if you have problem within a team. And the sooner, the better. We experienced team that after the exam, after getting the score, came to me and say me, but we have a problem with the team. Yes, wait a little bit more. And we will sure be able to solve it. So if you have a problem, if you start to have a problem, if you think you have a problem within the group, someone is not working as expecting, someone is committing to do things, but is not doing things, we can help. We are here actually just to help and support you. That's our work here, right? To teach you and also to help and support. And there will be many strategies to handle problem within groups. And so have a conversation with us if there is any problem. Or maybe gravity. And again, I need to stress this out because typically you don't do this. You don't speak with the teachers for whatever reason. Um, each team will then work just practically on their own GitHub repository where you can put all the assignments, material, and then also code at a certain point, and this will be private repository for each group, so no group will see the work of the others. The detail, at least. So, about the exam. And then we will speak a little bit more about the assignment. So, clearly, the project development is the biggest part. It will be up to 20 points, again, it will be done in teams, and the outcome will be two things. One, a report of all the assignment, all the work done during the semester before the exam, and also the sources of the prototypes you will be de develop. So there will be a code prototype, and that will be the source code of the prototype, but also will be other prototype known in code, and also those needs to be submitted. And it's a group project. And then there is six point points dedicated to the heuristic evaluation that will be individual. That's the individual component of the exam. It's one lab in which you will do some evaluation of another group prototype to give them feedback to improve it. And you will receive an evaluation from other people. And this is individual and it is a report to be done. And then there is the oral discussion of the project at the exam. These are four points, as a, again, as a group and is mandatory um, to be there as the entire group. And all of these will be valid in the academic year. So if you build a project and you don't pass the exam until next September, either you change course or you have to do it again. So you have until September, until the start of the next academic year to complete it, to pass it. And we keep for us two additional points for the effort during the course, the quality, of the work in general or in the project, and the quality of the whole discussion, etc. Well, the evaluation criteria are more or less this individual contribution, quality of the presentation discussion, quality of the work, the completeness of the reports, capability to listen and implement the feedbacks, etc. etc. You can read this here. Um, so the goal of the project development, that is a big part, is to give you and some experience 
with this process, human-centered, that we described step-by-step step during the course and step-by-step step carried on during the lab. The project topic must be within one general topic, so let's say health and well-being, but the specific topic will be decided after you will do some need finding, so extracting needs from people, mm -hmm. always within the chosen team, and we will speak about need findings clearly. And group assignments represents the various step of this process. They will start during the lab. They are often, as I said before, followed by a check with teachers in one of the labs hour. So all of this is going to happen during the schedule. And all of this is just evaluated at the exam time. There is no group evaluation before the exam time. And the discussion clearly also. So this is just to lay out the planned assignment and checks. They may change, we hope no, but this is the plan at least. So assignment one will be need finding will start next week and it will last two weeks. Mm? So the checks will be in week four. The second assignment will be about the low fidelity prototype, the first iteration of the prototype of your solution. And it will be made with papers and pen. So kindergarten skills are needed there. And also this will last two weeks. Then there is the individual assignment that will be done during the lab week nine, and it's individual on another group, low fidelity prototype. And the output of this will be in a report for us to grade, and the results will be passed to another group to actually improve their, as a feedback to, to their work. Uh, assignment four will just last one week, and it's moving from the results to the high fidelity prototype, it is the prototype in code. And all in that moment, you will start writing code. So week 10 of the course out of 14. And then assignment five will be the last one and it will actually be about coding your final prototype. That will still be a prototype, not a final product, not something that you have to sell or to share, it's just a prototype. So it should be feature complete for the main goal of the solution, but not feature complete in general. Hmm? And it starts a week, well, between week 10 and 11, and ends one week before each exam. So if you're going to do the exam the first seat, it will be one week before the exam date, the official exam date. If you're going to have this exam in September, you have February, March, April, May, June, etc. to work until one week before the official date in September. So it's up to the group to decide when they think they are ready to submit this. Uh, this is just a visual um, representation of these uh, assignments. And week five is almost empty because on Wednesday is holiday. That Wednesday is holiday, I don't remember which one, but is no class on that Wednesday, so we clearly don't do labs that Wednesday. And the project completion level needs to be on high fidelity, and we will repeat this, because many of you will ask again. So this will be an high fidelity interactive prototype, so not a final product. So the application is not required, for instance, to fully implement standard features like registration, login, Etc. until you are innovating on the login procedure, that's possible. But if the focus is on other things, is again on running application, then uh, you can assume that your user is already logged in and you have all the user logged in that you need it and all the data you need hmm? because it's a prototype. This also means that some difficult or standard feature can be faked or hard coded within the application. And pay attention to one thing, I already told this, but let me say that again. Whatever you decide during the assignment, then will need to be coded. So in, if in you imagine, let's say, a virtual reality, a very cool virtual reality application with the headset, then you have to do it with headset in virtual reality. Mm? So it should be technically something that you are going to do in the end. Again, it will not be feature complete, but if it's a virtual reality application, it should be something about virtual reality, for instance. 
So the choices you make during the process, keep in mind that you are going to implement the main things about that, especially on the interaction perspective. Uh, the oral discussion, uh, all the entire group should present and presenting, should be present and presenting so that everybody speaks during the oral discussion. Uh, each group will present the project, and we will repeat along the course clearly, with three steps. One is a brief introduction to the project, just to remind everybody what he's speaking about. The second, that is the main part, is the demonstration of the final version of the prototype, the one in code. And it's a demo, so you have to demonstrate. Don't go there and say, oh, this is, page, this is the home page, and the home page, you find this information. And this is another page, so tell it under the user perspective. So what they can do with your application, more than what the application can do in general. And three, some questions from all the teachers. So the one from your slot and the one from the other slots. Hmm? Um, also according to the things you have submitted. And let me just start to say the demonstration is the most critical part and the one that can have you lose or gain most point here. And it needs to be then, clearly not now, be careful prepared. Uh, and we, before the exam, we already have read the reports and we can also, we'll have access to the final prototype code if we need to, to see that. So there is no need, and also grade it then already, up to 20 points. So there is no need during the discussion to, to repeat what is written in the report or to show the code because we have access to it. And if we want, we see them before. Hmm? So the, demo the discussion is mostly about the demonstration of what you have done with this last part of the project. So we had five assignments, but actually there is another one just to get started. So assignment zero, that is the group composition. That's the first step, right? So we created a Google form. I will also put this link on the website, but for now it's just in the slide. And by October 10, End of the day, all our deadlines will be end of the day Italian time. So 23 and five, 23 hours, 59 minutes, 59 seconds, etc. So end of the day, uh, you will have to submit this Google form with a name of the group, one or two words, pick one that you like, just the name of your group, the people in it, maximum four, minimum three, with um, your ID, student ID, last name, first name, GitHub username, and preferred email for any communication if needed, and two, preferred slot of the lab. So the form will ask which is your first preferred slot and which is your second preferred slot, so that we will try always to respect your preference, but if it's not possible, we will, your first preference, but if it's not possible, we will go to the second one, right? And in the second one, there is actually an option also that say, I cannot in any other time, that is not the first lot, because maybe there is, I know that there are overlaps with other courses, so it may happen that one cannot attend one specific, only one specific slot or two specific slots and not others. So there is an option on the form to say that. This is to be done in eight days from now. So in this week, you can, um, you can speak with our colleagues during the classes. You can use the Telegram group for shopping people to be put in the group if you need it. And then when you're ready, form the group. This is again just selecting the topic and forming the group. There is no requirements on project ideas, etc., etc., because we again, we will start from needs and not from um, a, a solution or your ideas on what a project could be hmm, for now. Uh, okay, any questions up to now?
Is it everything clear? Are you sure? No doubts. Okay. So, um, one of the things, not clearly, as I already said probably this, but clearly participation in the lab is really fundamental, right, for the course and also for successfully pass the course. Um, so, while lectures are recorded, so if you have to choose, maybe not you that are here, but maybe those that will hopefully listen the recording, if you have to choose to be here or in a lab, choose the lab, always, because the lectures are recorded, so in a way or another, you will be able to uh, get on it. If you lose the lab, you will lose the lab. There is no way to recover it, right? And again, if you have any question along, we have the group, the Telegram group, and we have, um, you can also ping directly people. Um, so just some suggested books. So the slides and the material will came mostly from these books. Um, you don't have to buy them, but just to tell you which they are, in case, some of them are available in the library if needed, um, but again, it's not mandatory to buy them. We will provide you all the information is needed. Uh, so one is a classical books uh, from Alan Dix, uh, that is uh, UK and others around the world. Gregory Abbott is, uh, was a Georgia Tech, now he's not Eastern, I think. And it's one book, it's called Human Computer Interaction, that's self-expressive uh, as a title. Uh, the other one is Design the User Interface, um, from other people very known in the, in the Human Computer Interaction field. The problem with these two books are they are quite old. So the first one is, is 19 years old, and the other one is 2016, so better but not really updated. Uh, other two books, more or less the same age, are Human Group Interaction and Empirical Research Perspective. It has some useful hint, but it's more about research. Um, and the other one is Designing Interactive System. And these are textbooks, course books, books that you can read for um, the, the courses that cover what we are going to, to teach here. Other two nice books that are instead more, let's say, fiction than not uh, course textbooks are these two. One is uh, The Design of Everyday Thing by Don Norman that was updated in 2013. It's a book way older. And the other one is Don't Make Me Think. That's the suggestion for web designing from Steve Krug that say if you have to think too much when you're looking at the user interface, then there is a problem. Don't make the person think. And the book uh, from Don Norman in Italian, it's also available in Italian, and it's called not the translation of the design of the things, it's called La Caffettiera del Masochista. And so for those who don't speak Italian, um, look at the picture, all right? Um, the picture is a coffee maker or a tea maker, if you want. And what's the problem with that? The handle is on the wrong side. Yes, the end or, or, or the old is, is the wrong side. You, you can use it, actually. It's not that you cannot, right? It, it works. It makes coffee, makes tea, makes uh, hot water. So it works. It's a good example. Because it's one thing that works. So can be used, you, you can use the handle, right? You can also burn yourself, but it's another story. That's the problem. The problem is that if you use it, you will throw the coffee or the tea on your hand and you will burn yourself. So it's, you can use it, it works, but it's not usable because you will burn yourself and you probably spill the content everywhere. Hmm? So this is a classical book on human interaction. 2013 is just the revised edition, but is, I think it's the, on, from the 80, 1980. Um, so it's a classical book from no normal psychologist. It's not a computer scientist or similar. Okay, so any other question on this?
So let me say a couple of things about team then. Since we have half an hour, we can end a little bit early since it's the first class. Uh, so team number one, health and well-being. I just keep before just for purpose of time, but now since we have a little bit health and well-being. Um, what projects in this team can include? Can include physical, mental, and also emotional dimension. So well-being in 100%. And within the team, you will explore ways to leverage principle we are going to see to create application, interfaces, system that, and this is the goal, empower individuals hmm, to lead healthier lives, focusing on aspects like fitness, mental health, stress management, better social connection, etc., etc. So, ample team could be also medical oriented hmm, diseases because health. So ample team to create project within. And here there is an example uh, with digital well-being, so overuse of technology that can bring stress management, for instance, right? In which say, uh, no one, are you okay? Me, yes, I'm totally fine, and my phone, uh, use your phone 42 hours more than last week. Clearly you're not totally fine. Um, educational learning, Again, education could be formal, informal education, so not in a class, right? Something you have to learn. Um, so you can learn at school. You can create project on how to improve the relationship between teacher and students, how to improve the math skill in, in primary school. So formal education, play sport, how to play correctly some sports, some moves that you have to do. Uh, past cultural tradition and languages that's also learning and education between one generation and the other or preserving cultural tradition and languages from one generation to the other mm -hmm. so project here we will try to create the educational in this ample sense experience visiting museum seeing uh, i'm trying to remember example from last year that was similar to this seeing uh, how a monument will appear, would appear in the past, like 100 years ago, etc. So helping people learn better and possibly with more fun. And the other one, uh, it's about imagining. And this theme, I need to tell you, is tricky, but Tomas will work around this. It's more tricky, it's trickier than the other two because the other two are technology independent. You can do education wherever you want, in which context, with whatever people you want. And also health will be, could be for the elderly, for the younger, pick one. Here, there is AI in the title. So it, it restricts a little bit the field. It could be whatever, it could be health, it could be education, but you have to start imagining how AI can impact and influence that specific topic without mentioning, at least at the beginning, AI in it. So it should be a field that can possibly benefit from AI, but without explicitly saying AI when you're going to do the first steps of the project. It's doable, it's more than doable, it's just this difference that makes it a little bit tricky with respect to the other two. So in this topic, you will investigate the role on shaping user trust, understanding and adopting AI system with the goal to support people in whatever variety of tasks you can think, including decision making and also creativity, expression for creativity. Okay? These are the three teams. So just to give you a preview of what's going, what will happen uh, next week. So next week you will have submitted your teams project, right? Your team's composition. And we, on Wednesday, we will start speaking about user needs and need finding. So the first things you will need to do is to figure out a specific context and some specific people where you want to explore, let's say, the whole topic. 
That means deciding I want to speak with nurses in the hospital about their logistical aspects of their work. So no technology involved, no application to be mentioned, but just a context of some people you want to understand better. Or I want to speak about with students and teachers in primary school. Or I want to speak with personal trainer in a gym to understand which are the struggles of the personal trainer, etc. So you just need, just in a sense, need to define restrict the topic health and well-being, education and learning, humans with AI in a more specific context and specific people within the context and we will tell you how clearly so that you can go to these people and think about this already now you need to go to these people so don't pick astronauts if you don't know them right pick people you can easily or most mostly easily reach out to through your knowledge to your networks of people so you will need extra class outside of the other class go to these people and speak with them to collect the needs to understand which are the problem so that in the coming weeks you can build a solution for the problem for some of those problems this is what I meant before when I say we need to frame the problem before solving it and we will not start from our idea our vision of the world or our idea of problem but we will go to specific people and we'll ask about their what they are doing to understand not the wants but the need hmm? is this clear we will go again to it but just to it cannot really all of this be clear Okay, so let's make an example. Tell me within health and well-being what you are, if you need to write one line, what you want to, hypothetically, uh, without any, I will forget, uh, what you want to do within health and well-being. So what you will say about people and context of use. Whatever, even if you don't know people, it doesn't matter now. Just to see if you really have understood. So working on the physical well-being, maybe with Athletes? <coughs> athletes. Okay. So, physical being with athletes. Let's use this as an example. Thank you. Oh, maybe another one also. At least another example. So, context. Physical being who? Athletes. Another example. This is a good example. I, I can destroy it a little bit later. Um, Sorry? Helping elderly people to connect? Elderly people to connect each other. Yeah. This is more fun to, to destroy. So, but I start from his. Um, so, no, it's pay attention because this will be the first problem you will encounter, and the teacher will say no. So, I'm telling you already no, so that you have examples too. To start this so uh, physical activities athletes um, okay which physical activity because you think you have to go to some athletes and speak about physical activities so which athletes such a player which athletes swimmers
sport that played in group. Okay, and then you will need, okay, professional, let's say soccer player. Let's, let's pick this. Um, which age? Which range of age? Like children, soccer player, Your age. Okay, so not children, not 50 years old, like 18, 23, let's say. Okay. So all these ingredients are something important because you need to speak with these people, right? And, and also the question you ask, if you're speaking with children, you will ask questions differently than you speak with 20 years old, right? And the information they can give you are different. Good. Um, professional or not? It's like people running, playing soccer, or like in a, in a proper team? Let's say not professional. Not professional. Okay, not professional, but they play in a team or they play in the park? So casual player or actually athletes like in a team? In a team. Okay. And so all of these details are about just people. Now let's context. Um, so Supporting athletes of this age playing soccer in a team, uh, in a non-professional way, to do what? Physical activity. But what's the, what you're going to ask them? Tell me about your physical activity? It's a little bit general, like, as a question. So, what's the thing you are interested in? You want to support them to improve their physical activity? To play better? To To improve the skills in, in, the, in the game, in this case. Okay, so, uh, and we can continue, but you know, this, this is what you have to unpack from the, um, uh, from the sentence. Elderly, connect is even better. So elderly, which elderly? So we, differently from here, do you have a category of people, athletes, but we didn't have uh, age. Here we have the age, yeah. right, clearly. But chatty is an application, so we are not speaking about application yet, right? <laughs> That's why your was more, more fun than he is, because that is connect, it's links to social media, chat, etc. group messages, it's linked to specific technology. So you need to do a step back, like in his example, like right? So what's the thing you want to understand, not how they connect through technology, maybe also how they connect to the technology, but the question behind is how they network and spend their day, which are the uh, social activity they're doing, so in a more broader sense, right? And then you can restrict after. Uh, which elderly? Uh, general? Yeah, in general, like people who feel lonely, for instance. But it's hard to find it. But, well, yeah. we will figure out. Uh, it's just for uh, theoretical now, right? So, yes, which elderly? I mean, which is the age in which you classify elderly? Say 70. 70 onwards. Yeah. Okay. Living alone yeah. with no family. Wow. The consequence, because otherwise, or with yeah, no family. No family, okay. Um, What else? Um, uh, okay, how they connect, we already discussed about the connect, not chat, but more how they socialize currently. Uh, there was another thing, but I don't remember. Uh, anyway, um, yeah, no, but this is two examples, just to make a point, so start from the context. Imagine you have to speak with these people. So, you are going to observe how people elderly socialize, how people practice now soccer, how they do training, and you have to ask questions about those things, not about do you want a chat system or do you want a specific technology, right? And you have to be precise because you also need to, to figure out which are these people. Good. Um, okay, so last thing, let's use one five minutes for an example. I know this here is terribly hot. I don't know why, but 
uh, given that the microphone is not working, who knows? Um, let's speak about needs and wants. Then we will again re, re, re pick this again next week, tomorrow. Uh, but just briefly. So one example I can make for needs is, well, the classical example that is done with Henry Ford. You know what is, who is Henry Ford? Henry Ford? You know what he, who is, who was Henry Ford? Yes. Yes, not probably. He was the founder of <laughs> He was the founder of Ford, the car maker. Then when it was created the first car, the Model T, I think. Uh, I think the Model T. Uh, so this is this is attributed to Henry Ford, but it's not sure that was said to, by, by him, but let's use this for didactical purpose. So they say that a journalist asked Henry Ford if he asked people what they wanted before creating the first commercial card of the, of the car maker. And the answer was no, uh, because people would have told me that they want a faster horse, right? A faster horse. And this example is nice to understand needs and wants because probably people wanted let's let's assume it's true let's assume that ford went to stem people and they say well i need a faster horse i need i have a horse i need one faster because because yes this is my desire to have faster horse and that is the want hmm? so let's imagine that ford adds information 100 people 1000 people told him i want a faster horse what he could have done following this precise instruction. Hmm? Braid a faster horse, be an engineer a faster horse. I don't know what he could have done. Uh, is the car a faster horse in a sense? Yes. So what's the need behind the, for the want? The want is, I want a faster horse. What's the need behind? Go fast, Go fast or? Faster mobilization. Don't use fast. Less time to do what? To reach destination. They wanted to go from place A, from place B, in less time, faster, in a way. So. They, people, knew horses. And so what they wanted? A faster horse. Because horse was the typical private transportation mean at the time. And so one could have been beingerized a uh, horse or braid a faster horse in one sense, or extracting the need from within this, that is, go faster or use less time to go from place A to place B, that is the need, and come up with something that is totally different from an horse, but that fulfills the same need. Mm -hmm. So this is an example in which it should be clear what's the difference between the need and the want. The want stems from the need, but the need could be also more profound and could open more possibility. You could have also worked on airplanes. It's so another opportunity to go faster from one place to another, in theory, or other transportation me means. That is the need, and it open opportunity. The ones specify one solution that starts from the experience of the person. And another, another one that was Steve Jobs say, said that people don't know what they want, not because people are stupid, that's, that's the sentence. That's me, let's say, not because people are stupid, but because people start from their own experience, their own life. If they always have seen horses, they will speak about horses, because they never have seen a car. So it's our role as 
designer, engineer, developer, etc., to come up with the solution to solve their needs, more than following their instruction according to their own perspective of the world. And without the, and, and only giving, and people typically give the knowledge according to what they know, so they know what is possible, what is not possible, for instance, technologically. So one of the first step would be to move from what the people will tell you they want or they need to what they actually need. That would be uh, probably the most difficult step you have to do in this course because the other things will be easier in a way. But this is needs a change of paradigm with, with respect to what you, we all are you here are used to, to have. Okay, then we will speak about needs and wants from tomorrow onwards. Okay, any other question or any question actually? Good, so I will stay here for other five, 10 minutes to unplug everything. If you have any question, maybe personal, feel free to come here. Otherwise we will see each other tomorrow. Have a rest, have a nice rest of the day.